Hey guys, I'm going to perform a spell for you guys uh, this morning. Um, preferably, I would have waited till tomorrow to do this at the hour of Mars, which occurs a couple times in the daytime, right? Um, because Mars is, you know, like war and good for like curses, stuff like that. So it's like fast ones and things when you need action being taken versus like binding or restricting somebody. Um, yeah, so I would have waited until tomorrow. However, today's the full moon at noontime. And for me, full moons are all about like releasing and sowing what you reap. So, because <clears throat> it's like harvest, right? It's the light that's highest peak and then it goes through. The other thing is that full moons to me are in opposition, right? Opposition between the moon and the sun. So there are conflicts. There's a conflict there. Um, so I'm going to utilize that energy and my spell today. And I'm pretty sure it's like the hour of Mercury or whatever. I didn't really have time to properly plan. But I feel like Tuesday, like tomorrow, if like anybody needs to do this type of working, tomorrow and the hour of Mars would be a good time to do this. Because the full moon energy is still around. But then it isn't just the full moon energy after a full moon, right? It's sort of like the waning moon too. So it's about removing obstacles and things like that too. So... You can do it that way. I have not slept tonight, so I'm pretty exhausted. Also, if it looks like I'm looking over or my voice starts to get quiet, it's probably because my, um, I love my parents, so, uh, my dad's probably getting up for work, but, and yeah, I'm almost 23, so, but anyways, um, yeah, so this is to get back a thief and really crappy person whether this is like they're stealing your friends they're stealing your money they, they took your job they stole from you you just had enough right enough of their bull crap because that's where i'm at um i'm gonna take care of that today so <clears throat> i have everything in front of me that i need but it's kind of like out of the room of the care or out of the room it's out of the view of the camera so i'm gonna drink my coffee too So, what I did first, I'm going to explain what I did first, is over here, which I'm going to take a photo, and I'm either going to insert it into the beginning of this video, so you can see what that looks like, or it'll be my thumbnail. So, I feel like, in the place that I live, because there was somebody who killed himself in my bedroom, and I also feel a really strong connection to the, um, like, spirits of this place, nature spirits here, right, because I feel like I have a really good connection with them if something is outside it's not supposed to be I kind of get like a over there's like a trash thing so I'm just gonna I'm gonna lean over here so anyways um so I feel really connected so what I did is I got like a little mound of sand right it has some like weeds because we have like a sand pit here this is where we have our fires right so you could probably take like really clay dirt or something like that but I made a little mound I'm on like a little deck like thing um and stuck two yellow candles yellow because yellow is good for communication two because two is a doorway it's a gateway right so and then what i did i can actually just show you this but i got a green apple as my offering and i cut that bad boy in half after i lit the candle and called upon the spirits of this place if they would choose to to witness my spell work and aid me if they decide to right just because i feel like i never really do spells outside so i feel like it might be a little bit intrusive however um i felt really called to do this tonight in fact i was gonna do this earlier but then i figured i went out front and set up all this stuff right and then i heard my dad's uh alarm clock go off on his phone so i got kind of paranoid so i moved everything out back so by that time the sun kind of came up a little bit so um yeah i'm out of the camera view and all that stuff but it's really all right and yeah i have pants on by the way so i did that i called upon them i left them an offering of the apple because the five it looks like a little pentacle where the seeds are at you can't really see it on this one you probably see it better on the other half that i made so to me that's protection but also this has to do with transformation and just magic in general and i'm really trying to call on like a spiritual energy to the spot from that because i don't really do um let's start i don't really do magic outside here because mainly lack of privacy overhearing that type of thing, you know what I mean? On top of the fact that it's like a big yard. 
so I don't really want attention drawn to me. And the person that I am choosing to do this on happens to actually live here. So, it's not enough of their crap. Um, so, this is what you're going to need. I got a jar. This is an old candle jar. I didn't use it for spell work. This is like, this is like a five-year-old candle jar. I just saved these when they burned down. I didn't use this color for anything in particular. Um, doesn't really matter if it has soot in the glass. All you really need to make sure is that it has a tight-fitting lid. Because when you shake it, you don't want any contents to fall out. Or, you know, spill or whatever. I, I would say that the soot, soot's good for protection. So, if this is somebody you, you also want a little bit of protection from, you could use that in your intention. However, I have other working plans for that. Because when I'm done here, I am going to go to bed. But when I wake up, I'm going to cleanse my room, cleanse myself after doing this working. Um, and this little locket here, I'm going to make it into like a little talisman for protection again. Because I did this like a month or two ago. So I'm going to redo it. Um, for specifically against thieving ass people. Um, and people who don't like who have no sense of boundaries or respect. Um, so, yeah, you're gonna need the star. You're gonna need a picture of the person. I'm gonna cover up their face because I'm a little bit nice. And there's also some mold on it because I left this photo outside. One day when I was planning on doing somewhere working, but I never did. Uh, so I left all this stuff outside. Not all this stuff, but this was part of the stuff that I left outside. So there's mold on it. And I figured, well, hey, you know what? This would be really great because you know, they're toxic, right? Um, so if we're in a jar, that's important. We just had a thunderstorm. This used to be an ashtray, so it's probably a little bit of dirt. I think this is dirt, not ash, but this is storm water. So, why is this symbolically important? We're gonna go into this, because I feel like every time somebody tries to explain something on YouTube in a video format, they never really explain the correspondences, right? So the storm water, water is, well, it's good for adding extra potency, which I'm going to need because I'm not doing this on a proper day or hour or moon sign. Either. I'm not doing this properly at all, other than I'm taking advantage of the opposition of the full moon, the fact that the full moon is square Uranus, which creates even more like sudden changes, stuff like that. That's really what I'm going for here, right? So, and ideally, if you do this tomorrow, <clears throat> what you're going to want to do is look up the Orphic Hymn of Mars and call upon him first instead of doing a good with the nature spirits, especially if you're inside. So, or you're by a window where you can see the planet or you're comfortable working in um, the outside space. So, um, yeah, and storm water is also really good for causing like destruction and like change and um, like fear. Like, like you're so afraid that you create your own self-fulfilling prophecies, that type of thing. Okay? So this is important for that. But you can look up the properties of stormwater and you can figure out how you want to use it. We just had some, like, really nasty weather. I got this, like, two nights ago. Which was interesting because when I came in, the person that I'm doing this to, um, so I picked this up and she's like, well, well, what are you using it for? And I'm like, uh, obviously I'm going to cleanse my space with it. Right now I'm going to cleanse my immediate environment of the people that I don't need because they're shitty which is actually just a person because literally everybody else is like okay whatever but this person so regardless anyways you're gonna need a black marker I get sidetracked easy I have not slept so you're gonna need a black marker because like it's a permanent marker um black has it corresponds to Saturn um you could also probably do this on a Saturday too Ideally, Mar um, Tuesday, Mars hour, Martian day, Martian influences, Mars exalted, um, but then next would be Saturn, so, um, and what we're going to do with this picture is, on its face, we're going to make a big X, because this is the target, sorry, I was looking to see if the cat was staring at me or somebody else, I've had made a weird face, so the X is the target, on the back, what we're going to do is we're going to write their name, and then we're going to write your name around their name. Why are we doing this? Because you have I, but if you do this, you have the... This person is surrounded. This person becomes surrounded with your energy. They're trapped in the spell. They're absorbing it. You are now the person who has the power and dominance in the situation, no longer them. Okay, so the X on the front 
is because those are your target and you want spirit to know exactly who the fuck it is, right? Okay, so what I did is I got this like piece of metal. I don't know what it is, but see all this? This is a cobweb. So it's like a good time. I just walked into one down here. Um, there's lots of them in the ground. If you find a cobweb, like an old cobweb that's not occupied, because spiders are pretty cool. I don't know if you know this, but they're good for your vegetable garden because they eat harmful pests and they catch them in their, in their little little webs. So the point of this, we're gonna take it off the metal, just the metal, just because I twine it up because I don't want to touch it because gross, right? So the cobweb is there to essentially get them caught in their web of lies and really make, like really trap them and constrict them and let their karma really be a predator and really get them, really go at them, right? Because that's what, that's what spiders do. They, they trap the fly in the cobweb, it starves, and then they eat the fly essentially so this this is why we're using this okay the next thing i believe this is there's a dead wasp in here i have these little play-doh containers because they're easy to hide and, and take point a point b without anybody looking at for sure so there's dead wasp in that there and some think bugs so i found this in like a window with dead bugs already in it i don't suggest killing wasps or going after them same thing with think bugs they smell they hurt whatever so the wasp is really like painful and scary, right? And this person in particular that I'm doing this to does not like bugs. No matter if it's a nice bug, bad bug, they run away from the bugs. So the idea there is that um, that they have fears about people um, not having good intentions for them and all that type of thing. I can't tell if this cat's looking at me or not. That's important though. Yeah, that's probably my neighbor, right? So we're just gonna pretend like we're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> Someone asked, we're doing a terror reading for YouTube. So, with the knowledge of hearing somebody. The other thing that I did, <clears throat> before I go into the rest of the ingredients you need, I'm gonna, I lit some incense here to help purify the space too. It is a black cherry incense, it don't really matter, in my opinion. Um, so we're just going to put some of these things I already listed off out of sight, out of mind for right now. So I don't be getting myself like talk crapped about by the neighbors because I live in a small town, right? So yeah, dead insects to really create fear and paranoia that people are plotting against them, type of thing. Um, and really so that they create their self-fulfilling prophecy, which is why the web's here because they're, they're going to be caught up in their own shit, right? And I honestly almost put cat poop in this recipe, and you could totally do that if you wanted to. Um, the next thing that I have here is Lucifer powder. Now this breaks down their psyche and, and um, kind of makes them decay from the inside out. and makes them like... Um, can't tell if this cat's looking at me or someone else. Because if the cat turns the other way, that means something was the other way that made him turn that way, right? So. The, <clears throat> sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm really sorry. So anyways, Lucifer powder. This recipe was from Hoodoo Delish. Now, I don't really trust her. I think she's probably pretty terrible. However, I like this recipe and I like some of her ideas that she has. However, I don't support her as a practitioner. So regardless, but you can find her recipe there for that if you want this exact one. You can come up with your own. I didn't do this while praying to Lucifer or anything like that. It's just the idea that the, that the person creates their own self-destruction and it eats away at them and it makes them like see what they're doing wrong but you know people that are incapable of feeling compassion they might be aware that they're doing something wrong but they don't really care but the idea is that um you know that that these traits about them it, it, it's self-destructive it becomes self-destructive for them it uh, makes them reflect back on their actions a little bit, but it doesn't really make them care, right? The idea here is to make them care, because this person honestly isn't going to give a fuck a dick because they didn't care the first time, they ain't going to care now, and they ain't going to care 10 years from now, so. And if they do, well, that would be cool, whatever. Alright, so in here, what you're going to need is their hair, okay? Make sure 
that this hair has none of your hair in it. Like you borrowed the hairbrush, it was in the tub. Make sure this is purely their hair. My hair is black, their hair is like a reddish brown color, so it's pretty hard to tell, or pretty easy to tell whose is whose, okay? You're also going to need five candles. I would prefer red or black, but I have white. So this is what I'm going to use, okay? Five is good for change and chaos and disturbances and destruction, okay? Now, in here, this is disgusting, clearly. This is war water. It's all black. It's gross, right? So, ew, and it stinks. It's so horrible smelling. So, <clears throat> the idea with that is to create conflicts, right? Because this person's already pretty conflict prone, and by next time they get an argument, it's inevitable. Probably won't be that much longer from now. Probably don't really have to add that ingredient for me personally, but you might need to. So, this has caused more arguments, more self-destruction between friends because the thing is that this person has been hanging out with my best friend and while I'm not a territorial person and normally I'd be like, hey, all the power to you, I'm glad you find someone that you like. However, this person is plotting against me, therefore they deserve what they get. And that's why the word water is there, that word water is to make any positive things in life just stink, it's going to really amp up the spell, it's really the powerhouse behind the spell, besides the storm water, um, the Lucifer powder. Um, you know, it's, it's good for cursing, it's good for removing the person, um, it's also a good defensive thing for, for me, um, but it's really just to create inner turmoil and external turmoil. So, the kind of ingredients I have here are like fear-based get trapped in your own shit, break down from the inside, create problems. Why? Because this is karma, okay? And some people, you don't really have to do this to because they kind of create their own problems. This is one of these people, however, however, it seems like this person, because she's kind of a practitioner, right? Like, she's kind of more like the kind um, that, sorry, I'm trying to see if I'm getting spied on or not. I like having a place to live. So anyways, um, this person seems to be getting away with a lot of things and nothing's really doing, like nothing's really changing. It's kind of stagnant, so. <clears throat> That's why I'm doing this because I'm tired of it. So I'm going to do this like live in front of you guys because um, I'm really feeling like that's the best way to do it. Okay? And I want to show you guys this because sometimes I'm really good at coming up with stuff on the fly. And so I have an incantation that's in here. And it's an incantation that caused some bad luck, but I really like the, um, the incantation itself. So, like, <clears throat> I'll be reading this bef when I go to light my candles, but in between each um, ingredient that I add in my jar, I'm going to tell them what to do. Um, yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a jar. Okay. Man, oh boy, I hope I have enough time before I freak somebody out here in the chant and shit. So, anyways, take the jar. We got the jar. That's important now. We're going to take one on the back. I'm gonna write their name and our date of birth just once. Right? Because we don't know no one to see that. Even though I hate this person, we still have to be responsible. Okay? So, um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, not my birth, I don't really need to put my birthday there because, you know, it's me. I'm the one doing this. Okay? But I'm going to keep some of this stuff um, hidden, just because this is going on YouTube. If it was just Facebook, I really wouldn't care, but. So I was able to get my name around their name three times, okay? After we do this part, okay, because the idea is that we're, they're trapped. Okay, I'm the predator and they're the prey, and this is why they're in the center and I'm around them, okay? So we flip this over mold there because they're toxic as fuck, right? So we draw a freaking X over the face because that's our target, okay? Mm. Okay, this is our 
our target. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this away from us because we want their shit to be away from us and only affect them. So we're going to turn this counterclockwise and pull this away from us. We're turning it counterclockwise because we want to lessen the impact they have on us, but we also need to keep the energy only on them and to them in particular. And I happen to know they're in particularly this distance away from me. Like, they're in that direction. So, right now, currently, at my best friend's house. Go figure. So, anyways, um, we're going to put this in the jar. Okay? So, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of put my hands over it and kind of put some energy into here. And the idea there is that the jar contains the energy and decays the mini universe so that it actually affects the macrocosm. So the microcosm. Like, this is the microcosm. Like, as within. So without. So this is the miniature version of the earth and this is going to affect what happens out there. Okay? So we're going to just push that energy into here and I just kind of do this quietly. Our first ingredient, well, our main ingredients are going to be um, the dry ones first because that makes sense to me. So we're going to go in with our cobweb, okay? So again, the cobwebs so that they get uh, okay trapped in their own stuff. So this person, I'm going to just say her first name, Dallas, is going to be trapped in her own lies and they're going to affect her and it's not going to affect anybody else and she's going to be eaten up of her own shit. Um, that no longer does the traps that she set for other people affect them, but it, they only affect her. In fact, it has quite the opposite effect that she desires it to be. In fact, anything that she tries to do badly towards me will come back to her stronger in other situations in her life from other people she has relationships with, right? So, when I did there, as I told her what to do, at that point, I don't really feel like I need to meditate and put that energy in there because I feel like my words have vibration, okay? So we're going to do that. Next, <clears throat> we're going to put our Lucifer powder. So while I do this, put this in here and, and say, let her tongue burn with the lies that she spews. Let her be aware of her actions. And let it break her down from the inside. We gotta put our bugs in here. Nope, nope, hair. Actually, we should put the hair in there already, but we're gonna do that. This hair is a sacred link between Dallas and what goes on in the star. What affects the star affects her. This is a direct link. This makes the spell stronger. So let it be. Put it in there. Okay? That's good enough for that. This time I'm a little bit more elaborate. I'm tired. While, while you put the bugs in, you're going to want to visualize. Because you could do snakeskin, anything like that that's freaky. If they're afraid of guns, do shell casings. If they don't like graveyards, do grave dirt. If they don't like ghosts, take something from a haunted house. Something along those lines. So I'm going to do bugs. Visualize these bugs terrifying this person coming out of nowhere and freaking them out and them feeling being filled with fear. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that might take me a second. Imagine them in their own web and a mass of scary things are coming from them. Now you can find as much time in between ingredients as you want to. The next thing I'm going to add <clears throat> is my war water because it's like really disgusting. I'm going to get that part of the way. 
not why you do this. Imagine them fighting. Everybody fighting with themselves, not knowing what they want, and causing general havoc in their lives. Imagine people cringing to stay away from them. They don't want to be around them. Besides the power and dominance, you know how I over them. Imagine this person shrinking and becoming small. Imagine everybody close to them turning against them. Okay. Storm water. Because we're going to cause chaos in our life. And that extra oomph to the spell. And we need to be able to cover the ingredients. This should be good. So that's all I have. So it needs to be good, right? Okay. So what we're going to visualize is all their actions coming back to bite them. And the general chaos that they're going to stir in their lives. And how fast this is going to come in. And how it happens one after another. Everything that tumultuous is going to happen happens faster and faster right after another sudden and rapid. Her a little. Okay, we're gonna go over here. If you're inside, put this over a sink or something, just or a trash can, but make sure it's not gonna spill out. So mine's kind of spilling, but that's alright. We don't need to put it upside down. We can just do this. Alright. So while you shake, visualize shaking things up in their life. Like, I can't believe I just got that on my hand. That's so disgusting. So, anyways, imagine shaking up their life. Change. I don't know what the rules are occurring. Everything about their life flip-flops. It's like a tower moment. It's a wake-up call. But, you know, some people can't have a wake-up call, right? Um, but it's a wake-up call from my perspective. Anyways. So, you're going to really put your energy into that. And shake this bad boy up. Shake her up with her fears. Your own fears cause your own self demise and self destruction. Let people fight, let people be confused over the words that they speak to one another. And let her only look bad in any confrontation. Let her walk away harmed and the other people unharmed. If you can't hear what I'm saying right now, it's really not that important. You can add your own words. Okay? Shake this bad boy up. Next. Okay, we've got five pianos here. Sometimes I accidentally talk with a southern accent. I can't help it. Um, make sure that's dry, good enough. Okay. And please don't get any of this warm water stuff on your hand. It's pretty disgusting. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these candles on here in the shape of an upside down pentagram because it's associated with bad stuff, even though it's not inherently bad, but that's how I'm feeling today. So, just stay there, buddy. 
Well, either a willow or rock. Alright. The other thing is that we want this to come back onto her and be inverted to her, not the out and you were only put on her. Make sure I'm not being watched for a second. Well, that was a loud bird. Now, all these should burn down pretty quick. I'm using birthday candles because that's what I have, but black chime candles or like five black tea lights out of their metal, or metal thing um, would work really wonderfully for this because black and or red. Red would also look really good too. Okay, let's do this. Are really good for helping putting the energy that I need to in the jar because as they burn, burn down they push the energy into the candle. That's not quite a good enough like a pentagram. Kind of looks like crap, but alright. So before I do the chant and light these candles, even though I should be staying focused, I have no doubt that this will work or this will yeah. I've got no clue where this incantation comes from. I think it might have come from Shirley2Feathers.com, but I really can't remember, to be honest with you. So I'm not trying to like copyright anybody's chant or steal it as intellectual property. I'm just going to go ahead and use it. So you can use anything similar. Um, it doesn't have to be what I'm using. It definitely doesn't have to be what I'm using. Um, I guess the title for this chant would have been Curse to Cause Bad Luck. It might have been Shirley Two Feathers. Okay. So, alright. I'm really going to. I'm going to repeat this chant five times. And I'm going to do it once every single time I light a candle. I think prior to. That's what I'm going to do. Alright. <clears throat> O oh, timeless spirits of hell and earth, I have been wrong and seek retribution. Bear down on my enemy, causing misfortune and failure in every endeavor. You don't want to say it mean, too, and commanding. You really want to fuel the spitefulness and bitchiness into it, okay? O oh, timeless spirits of hell and earth, I have been wrong and seek retribution. Bear down on my enemy, causing misfortune and failure in every endeavor. O oh, timeless spirits of hell and earth, I have been wrong and seek retribution. Bear down my enemy, causing misfortune and failure in every endeavor. O oh, timeless spirits of hell and earth, I have been wrong and seek retribution. Bear down on my enemy, causing misfortune and failure in every endeavor. O oh, timeless spirits of hell and earth, I have been wrong and seek retribution. Bear down on my enemy, causing misfortune and failure in every endeavor. O timeless spirits of hell and earth, I've been wrong and seek retribution. Bear down on my enemy, causing misfortune and failure in every endeavor. Okay? Now, what you can do, while these candles burn, you can sit here and visualize exactly how you want this to go down. That's what I usually do. Um, yeah, so I'm going to sit here and just kind of visualize this energy. Um, but I'm not going to do it too long. Here's why. A, these candles aren't going to burn that long. B, you don't really have to do it 
when the candle till the candles burn down and see this is a spell where you're gonna have to light five candles like this on top of the jar for three to five days ideally five if you don't have enough candles three is good too um preferably five though because five is pretty destructive um yeah so i'm going to think about how i want this to happen exactly so i'm on fire for a second don't worry but our fears i'm just gonna say words by the way just so it helps me focus but her fears and paranoia haunts her in her dreams and in her sleep and in her mind and in the waking day what her be suspicious that people are plotting against her and what her cause her own demise and destruction let her relationships fail with the people she values the most and uses because she's crappy okay normally i'd be louder okay let her fears and everything that she um, is trying to prevent from happening creep in on her like a bug. She spun into a cocoon of a web and her a spider is the fears and the anger and the stress that fuels her to create her own self-destruction and it slowly creeps up on her as she shakes and screams for her lifeless spider to choke her life from within and cause her own downfall. She's trapped in her own web of bullshit. Let her steal no more from you. Let her experience the consequences of her actions. Let her experience chaos and havoc like she's done to me emotionally inside, but for her externally. Let her know no peace and no serenity until she changes her ways as a human being to make at least make an effort to be better. Definitely not expecting a lot from her. Okay. Let her nightmares haunt her of bugs flying around, wanting to scream and run away. Creep up behind her. Snatch her up. her own destruction and cause it herself so that the fault may only lie with her. Let her realize the results of her actions fully so she becomes aware that she's a destructive, traumatic force. However, there are no mercy on her for she deserves done. So, while these candles burn down, I'm going to explain some stuff, okay? So, after you do this three to five times, okay, what you're going to want to do is put this in a fire, okay? Like a fire pit type of deal, type of setup. And ideally, this would get so hot that it would explode. May or may not. Maybe you have that type of look. Maybe you don't. I don't. But you can put it in a fire pit, okay? Let it burn, let the jar scorch. You can even take the lid off if you wanted to and really let it burn. Um, so before it burns, dance around the fire. Build up your rage and imagine all the crappy things that are about to come to this person because of their selves, right? Because this is them. They're capable of anything, even their own demise. You want to visualize this, and when you feel the energy built up and strong as you as it can, that doesn't make any sense. As much energy in you as possible, throw the jar in the fire angrily, releasing all that energy into the jar and into the fire. You can write your own incantation, um, but that's kind of how I like to do like negative workings, like to put it in the fire because the fire really fuels your rage, but the fire is also transforming it in its creation so it'll it'll help create this out into the macrocosm because remember the jar is a microcosm and the universe is the macrocosm it's like what goes on in here happens out there so what happens in the jar 
happens to her, but it only happens to her. And it doesn't negatively affect me, at least me, me and my friend. Um, yeah, so this is my spell work. Um, I've never really did spells like this before on camera. Um, hope this was helpful. Hope this gave somebody ideas. I would say that the most important parts to this is the war water, the cobwebs, a tag lock of some sort, at least a petition, um, obviously the jar, and I would say like, maybe the storm water, but like, you could probably use bog water. And speaking of which, I want to give you, I want to tell you how I did this, um, how I did this war water. So I can't remember if I put ammonia in it. I don't think I did. I might have put apple cider vinegar in it. I can't remember exactly what I did, but you can look up like different variations. You might be able to figure out what I did. But I did that urine, my urine. Um, because the urine is good for like dominance and stuff like that and control and um, you know, just pissing on someone's life, right? And then I found rusty nails back for where we used to have a burn pit. Um, just put the rust in there because nails are really good for like driving in the attention but they're also good for like stabbing somebody that type of stuff right um, and it creates the makes the water red although this one turned out black but it doesn't really matter but the the iron there the rust being there is corresponds to Mars the god of war to like weaponry because back in the day you know like weapons weren't guns the weapons were stuff made out of metals and iron and stuff like that so um, Oh boy, yes. And then I had a tote of water out there by my other part of my garden that was sitting on top of poison hemlock plant because I wanted to like shit out the light and kill it because I don't want to be around my vegetables obviously. So that water got really gross, so bog water. So I added that into it. And then I left it in some trees for a few weeks and never really opened it to reoxidize it. But it smells terrible. And I figured it worked extremely well. The other thing you could use in place of that in the spell is, um, I don't know the exact name for it, but I, I've, I've done this before, so you take vinegar and dried red uh, chilies or cayenne peppers and you should sure you're making a tincture with it because it'll turn like a reddish color. But it's really good for like protection against your enemies and like souring their life and causing arguments. So I do red pepper and clove. And you could do garlic, you could do black pepper, but basically it's just red peppers, like cayenne peppers, hot peppers, and vinegar, okay? Um, that could be in place of the war water. You could also add rusty nails into that mixture too. Just be mindful of the chemicals that you mix together. I wouldn't suggest putting ammonia and vinegar or anything like that together in a jar. Um, don't think I even put ammonia. I think I might have just put vinegar in my pee. But I did this all outside, well ventilated, wore masks, did my thing, too paranoid about inhaling fumes, so. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I need to, so I'm so tired, is there anything else I need to explain? Oh, your offering that you left to nature spirits or your deity, you can just bury. I think it'll do an apple, two candles, a little bit of sand knife that apparently has bugs all over it already, which is weird. Um, yeah, you just let that burn on top of the jar. It's almost done burning, if you want to see. Um, this is birthday candles, so they don't really take that long to burn. So, like, normally, if I wasn't on camera, I'd actually sit there that whole time and, like, really visualize, but I spoke words out loud, too, so that added the energy into this that I'll make highly serious about this jar. Um, because fuck that fucking bitch. Um, probably shouldn't curse on here, but at this point, I can't be monetized anyways right now, so I figured might as well say the F word because, well, it's not like I'm monetized right now or have the ability to, so I feel like I can cuss all I want, but I've been trying to hold back because I know some people don't really like that. However, um, not that I really care that much, but, um... If you wanted to, you could take, um, like let's say for instance you're cursing a thief and you don't know the person so you don't have their photo. If so you have like an extra deck of tarot cards or one that you lost a couple cards you don't use anymore, um, you could get 
uh, I forget what, the, I think it might be the Seven or Six of Swords, but whatever card is the guy stealing all the swords away from everybody, you could stick that inside, um, up there. You could also, and then do your petition on the back of that card, and write, you know, the person I suspect, for example, or the person who stole from me, for example, um, and then write your name around it, so I just put that candle out by accident, but that's okay. Um, also, instead of doing what I did and testing this, I you put everything in there to see if it leaked. Fill your jar up with some normal water first to make sure it don't leak. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so like, like I said in the beginning of this video, ideally you do this Tuesday, waning moon, hour of Mars, when Mars is exalted or uh, conjunct, like if you do this tomorrow, in the wee hours of tomorrow before it actually becomes Wednesday, um, like the Mars will be in Pisces. Mars is already in Pisces. The Moon will be in Pisces where Mars is. So if you can get those two planets conjunct, while well, the aspects applying but not separating, meaning if it's like the Moon's, let's say for example, Mars was at like 13 degrees Pisces, right? And so anywhere between like. 8 degrees Pisces and 13 degrees Pisces is where you want the moon to be, but you never want it to be after 13 degrees because of the, the aspect separating, it's it's the energy is leaving versus applying. So you want the energy to apply. Why do we want the moon and Mars to be conjunct for this? Well, because the moon is a satellite to Earth, it's the closest part to Earth, so it's, it's essentially like a messenger, kind of like Mercury is. So it'll help us manifest what we want Mars to do, so amplify it, but also Mars and the Moon are kind of like enemies, right? So you're getting tension there because Mars is all aggressive, Cancer is sensitive and mean, so we don't want that, but but if Mars is conjunct the Moon, that'll make moodiness even more extreme. And that's the idea here, because we don't want the moodiness to affect us, no, we want that to affect her, we want everything that is self-destructive about her to cause her own downfall because she sucks, okay? Now, let me tell you why I am justified in this, um, in case you're curious. So, this person has been stealing from me for quite some time, um, whether it be my own personal uh, recreational things or um, like my yoga mat, uh, my charger cord, um, just like everything I'm interested in. Which, it makes sense, if someone's younger than you, they, they want to, you know, they look up to you, so they adopt some of your personality traits, but here's the difference, right? Um, it's like when someone sees that you shine really bright, and so they want that shine for themselves, so they take it. Okay, this is why I'm saying that this can be used for any metaphorical use of the word thief. Um, so they take it. Normally I'm the type of person where I like to, sh I like to share my shine, I want people to shine. But here's my problem. This person does it consistently with everything and to the point to where they claim it for their own and they go out of their way to to like change stuff like I don't know. It's it's just it's old. I, I don't like people that mimic my personality. There's a difference between looking up to me and being inspired and then just straight mimicking everything that I do. And I'm really not down for that. I'm the type of person where I encourage people to be themselves. You should really just be yourself. And um, that's what she needs to do. She needs to be herself and cause her own bullshit like she normally does. Because I'm getting tired of her causing bullshit but nothing happening the way it usually does. So shit needs to happen to her, not to me. Um, and people need to be aware. And what you could do is you could add like little bits of mirror in here to let people like really see what's going on. Or you could take like a pair of like old glasses that are like reading glasses or something like that. Um, put them in there so people can see between the lines and see what's really going on. But yeah, so this could be used for any sort of like thieving, stealing, mimicking, copyright issues, plagiarism, stealing from- Because, okay, so people are going to hear, well, as far as in Tokyo yoga mat and the charge cord, is that really worth it? Yes, because this person has been consistent with their bullcrap their pretty much their whole lives okay and I have a lot of tolerance for bullcrap and I'm usually at my breaking point pretty often but this time 
I mean, the fact that I came out here at nighttime in the morning to do this, I uh, really at a breaking point. Um, because I cannot continue to have to feel like I have to constantly watch my things because somebody's going to take them, which is really interesting because being asked where I don't have a job, but this person has a job, and yet they take from me, the person who doesn't really have that much to begin with, and, um, you know, because I'm trying, I'm starting my own path, I'm doing my own thing, and I'd really like to do what makes me happy, um, but it's going to take me some time to get there, right? This person, I feel like, has been, it's almost like they're taking everything from me and taking all my opportunities that I have to gain things that I want, um, discouraging me, um, bringing me down, distracting me from my true purpose and working on myself and doing things that I need to do. They're, they're really taking that away from me. And that's why I feel like this is important to do. Um, because it's been pretty consistent for me. And I'm not the only person that's treated like this. So, and I guess, um, once I wake up, because it's like, you know, six, seven o'clock in the morning while I'm filming this, it's crazy, right? I, I literally haven't slept all. Um, just had coffee, so. But, uh, oh jeez, what was I gonna say? Ooh. Um. Yeah, so when I go to bed and I wake up, I'm going to be doing cleansing on myself, protection on myself, protection on my room, protection on me, because this person is sort of a practitioner, they're kind of like a poser, kind of, but then sometimes they do stuff, because what she does not know is there have been times where she's just simply went to the bathroom upstairs and her door was unlocked, so I went down there. I made her grimoire. Most of the stuff she has is because I gave it to her. Um... So at any point I can go down there and look at all her stuff and figure out what she's doing and I have done that before. Um, so that's why I'm taking protective measures um, because I, I'm i getting a feeling that she's been kind of going more into it. But maybe she's just posing. But either way I'm not taking a risk and I, I suggest if you do curses and hexes that you protect yourself because sometimes people will be able to pick up on that and what you don't want is for it to backfire. The other thing that she can do, which I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a decoy poppet of myself so that if anybody sends me negative energy my way, it goes to the doll, not me. And I've done this for someone before when I removed a curse from them and I made them a decoy poppet just in case this person decided to recurse them, in case they picked up on the fact that their curse has been removed. Um, I'm going to be doing that on myself. After that, what I'm going to be doing, I'll, I'll, I'll relate to you guys, my diabolical plan, um, I will be my best friend, my the, the, my target, um, I'm going to be doing work so that they no longer get along and they won't be hanging out and yeah, because here's my thing, like I said, I'm not a territorial friend, but you're not going to absorb everything that I love and care about and make it your own, like I said, be yourself, make your own friends, you, you know. Hmm. My camera just did a thing. I can't tell if that door up there is open because somebody's listening or if I'm hallucinating because I'm tired. So anyways, um, my will plan, yeah. So I'll be doing workings to separate the two. Um, doing that um, and um, working to get her to leave um, and I'll be doing some freezer work to get her to leave me alone and stop being a bitch to me because I'm done with that too um, you know because I have Capricorn ascendant so I, I do my best to really hold it together and not act crazy. So that usually when I do act crazy, people are like super overwhelmed by it because it's super dramatic, but that's just what happens when you hold in your emotions and you don't know how to express them and process them correctly. So wouldn't suggest holding them in. I would suggest processing them correctly. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so I, I have a lot of things I need to be doing for this particular working. Um, for it to be successful and all these spells to layer correctly to get the goal that I need to be done, which is to have this motherfucker pay for the shit that she's done to me. Stop the shit that she's doing to me. Keep her from being able to do more shit to me. And just to overall keep her distance from me because I don't need somebody to mimic my personality. There's one of me, there's enough of me, trust me, okay? Like I'm barely um, enough as a human. There isn't, which is depressing to say a lot, but that's how I feel sometimes, so why? Become me, right? Just be yourself, just be yourself. You don't You don't need my personality traits, you, you, you don't need my looks, you don't need my friends, you don't need those things. You need to be you, um, because that's the most empowering thing ever, so. I'm not one of those people that's just absorbed with the personality traits. I can't stand that about people like all oh, like just again be yourself and and this is really what this is for so um yeah and if you really want to get creative right let's say you know the person you're allowed on the property maybe you're like you didn't tell them yet that you know that they stole from you but you're allowed to be there right but they have no clue that you're a practitioner, okay? Take this, when you're done, get a big, you know, make sure it's a fragile jar at that point, like a really thin glass one. Get like a sledgehammer. It's like midnight when it's all spooky outside and the wind picks up and gets all eerie. Put this on their porch. Get your sledgehammer and crash it. Because what's gonna happen is they're gonna see it and that initial fear is going to implant that spell into them and, and really make it work effectively. Um, if you can't do that because of other reasons, then I would not suggest doing that. Um, if you need to put this somewhere in the meantime, I suggest putting this in a dark place. So I'm going to be putting this under this thing here because A, no one's going to look there. B, it's disgusting and creepy and gross and cobwebs and everything down there. So it's really just going to add into the energy that I need. Um, and B, I don't want this in my room because that warm water smells horrible. And I would not keep that in your room and I would, I would keep that in like a basement and shelf in a drawer somewhere like away don't want your casket to it kids nothing um yeah so i hope you guys found this helpful i'm gonna get off here before this video is an hour long although it's 57 minutes um i hope this gave you guys some ideas uh i normally don't do these type of videos but i, I might start doing this like if i can find some time alone to do these types of things I will because so, something that I think is really un underrated is spell work videos. I really truly do because there's really not a lot of them and it's hard to find good ones and YouTube's flooded with like mediocre spell work. Like some of the most um, beginner type of stuff. I don't know. I don't really enjoy it but uh, I think White Raven Lair, Liar, she does some good ones. Uh, lady Grave Dancer before she got off YouTube did really good small videos. So those are some really good creative inspirations um, of mine. In in inspirators? Yeah, they bring me a lot of inspiration and inspire a lot of my spell work and um, like the way that I design it. So. Yeah. Fuck that person up. Don't let them take from you. Don't let them become you. Don't fuck with any of that shit and don't tolerate it. Don't tolerate it as long as I have been. It's a bad idea, okay? So if you need to do something like this, I suggest you do it. It's important, protect yourself. Bitches need to get what's coming to them, especially when karma's not working fast enough these days. It seems like everybody deserves it and it never comes quick enough, so yeah. Um, hope you guys got some sleep unlike me. Um, and hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I'm going to go to bed.